Throwback Tuesdays, Hawks Talk and Squawk about how the West Park congregation was so unruly from the elder body down to the publishers that the organization sent then a former Bethel light. Well, it actually sent in two former Bethel lights. You know, the guy I referred to as Kenji, his real name was Andre Alexander, and the other brother, his sidekick, his name was Derek Smith. Andre Alexander, who would become the known as Kenji, if any of you watch the popular sitcom Martin, Kenji was Dragonfly Jones's assistant. You know, the one that would always whoop his ass as the Dragonfly would try punking him. But Kenji would always whoop his ass then, take the money that was owed to him. So yeah, Andre Alexander, he looked like a cross between Kenji from Martin and Squidward from Spongebob. That's Andre Alexander. He is the former Bethelite. <clears throat> and prior to coming to the West Park congregation, he was a presiding overseer at one of them uptown congregations. You know, in fact, I knew a few people from the congregation where he was formerly to preside and overseer. But anyway, in early 2003, he was reassigned to the West Park congregation along with his sidekick, Derek Smith, who came to be known as, we called him Hollow Man, cause man, old oh man, like, man, you wanna talk about bad breath? <clears throat> He had halitosis to the max. Shh, man. We called him Hollow Man. <laughs> we called him uh, Kenji Stink Breath Sidekick. As you know in former videos, that's how I referenced Derek Smith. <laughs> As the Stink Breath Sidekick. <clears throat> anyway, early 2003, they were both reassigned to the West Park congregation due to the shaky headship from our previous presiding overseers. Like prior to them coming to the congregation, our presiding overseer was uh, Lloyd Early. Now Lloyd Early, he had three daughters. One of the daughters was the one that got married where I showed up to the wedding and dressed down. I did a video on that probably a couple of months ago now. That was his daughter. Anyway, Lloyd Early was the previous presiding overseer. But a couple of his daughters, they was running around while doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing. From a J-Dub standard. And they wound up getting reproved. Now one of the daughters had got baptized with me. The summer before that. And just a few months later. She was reproved. But the fact that. She went telling the wrong people. All the shit she was doing. You know what I mean. That was stupid on her part. You know, for her to go running her mouth to the wrong people. And one of the people that she ran because I knew all the shit she was doing because I knew the people she was doing shit with because we all lived in Winfield. So, and you know, I would hear rumors, you know what I mean, about the early girls and how they would sneak dudes down in the basement at night. And yeah, they would... And this was even bef way before that because guys would come to school and they would be bragging about it in the hallways or lunchrooms or whatever. 
But anyway, that was uh, Lloyd Early. He became the presiding overseer like late 2001. And he replaced Joseph Hearns. Now, Joseph Hearns was the father of my homie, Nad Raj. Nad Raj was actually the one <clears throat> that ran his mouth about what the early daughters were doing. And so after that point, that's why the Hearns family wasn't invited to the wedding. But anyway, prior to Lloyd Early, Joseph Hearns was the presiding overseer, but he had got removed as the PO. He didn't get removed as an elder, but he got removed as the presiding overseer because he was scamming different people throughout the organization. He was a big time scam artist. That's going to be a topic for another video of all the scamming that went on that I know of in the Jehovah's Witness organization. Because we had a couple of big scam artists right there in our congregation. But again, that's a, another topic for another video. But anyway, Joseph Hearns, he had got in trouble for that. But they kept it on the hush-hush. And instead of making him step down as an elder, they took his presiding overseer title and appointed Lloyd Early <clears throat> as the P.O. Joseph Hearns was the presiding overseer for years, though. Like, going back to when I was real young. So, he had to have a, run, a good... He definitely had more than a 10-year run as the presiding overseer. He stepped down as the P.O. in 2001, and that's when Lloyd Early became the presiding overseer. Now, Lloyd Early, he was only the P.O. for like a about a year and a half until Kenji and Hollow Man came. Hollow Man, to my knowledge, was like the first ever assistant presiding overseer. Because during Joseph Hearn's reign and Lloyd Early's, there wasn't really no number two elder. But, you know, they sent in these two former Bethelites and they came to the congregation acting like this shit didn't stink and thinking they ran everything. Now, even though the cult was always the cult, you know, the cult was always the cult. But I, what I will say is that the West Park congregation was a lot more lenient before Kenji and Hollow Man came along. It's like once they came along, they just took the fun out of everything. Because prior to that, we used to always have gatherings. We used to have, like, they didn't really call them congregation picnics, but... Or cookouts, but we would have cookouts, like, all the time. <clears throat> it was, like, kind of more laid back. You know? Like, for the brothers that had responsibilities in the congregation. Because at the time they came, I had been baptized probably about six months at this point. And I got privileges right away in the congregation once I got baptized, like, Less than a month after getting dipped, I was already carrying the mics. I never liked working the stage. And I kind of bullied Nad Raj into letting me work the sound system. You know, we would take turns operating the sound system. But I didn't like doing the stage. I loved carrying the mics because it gave me a chance to move around. And not too much longer after that, I got a, uh, I started working behind the literature counter with my cousin Sheaf. But anyway, about six months after that, that's when Kenji and Hollow Band came and they just sucked the fun out of everything. It's like they made it mandatory for that 
all of the brothers with responsibilities got to the hall 45 minutes before the meeting started. So if the Theocratic Ministry School and Service meeting started at 7.30, they wanted us there by 6.45. Now I understand working behind the literature counter, you have to get there early, set up, and do whatever. But for the brothers that just carried the mics or did the stage or whatever, you don't need 45 minutes to do all of that. But yeah, they wanted us there 45 minutes before the meeting on Sundays when we had those early 9.30 meetings. I'm like, I'm not getting here at no 8.45. I'll get there at 9 o'clock, maybe 5 after. But they just came along and they started having these mandatory Bethel speakers, meaning that if you was a, a quote-unquote exemplary brother in the congregation you had to be in attendance for these special talks and they would have them like once a month and it was always on a Saturday and then sometimes they would give they would give the talk they would be the brother the speaking brother for that Sunday too but you know I mean they would have mandatory Bethel speakers on Saturdays and even for the sisters, for the sisters that were seen as exemplary, like the elders and ministerial servants, wives, the pioneers, you know what I mean? Everybody, they wanted everybody there. So it was like they just came along and sucked the fun out of everything. I remember the first meeting we had with them, it was Kenji Hollow Man and the rest of the elders and ministerial servants and all the brothers that had responsibilities in the congregation. And they touched on the subject of rap music. Now me and Mommy Naraj, we had a huge rap collection. I mean, I had a bigger rap collection than he did. I had CDs and all of that and so did he. But Kenji gets into talking about how if you listen to rap music or own rap music, then you're not considered exemplary and you'll lose your privileges. That Roger got shook. And right after that, he went home and supposedly destroyed all of his rap CDs. Then he looked at me like, hey, what you going to do? Are you going to break your CDs? You going to burn them or you going to give them away? I looked at him like he had lost his damn mind. I was like, you heard what uh brother Alexander what, what brother Alexander said? I said, "Nah, I ain't hear that." <laughs> there wasn't no way I was uh getting rid of my rap music, my R-rated movies. Or none of that. But it's just like they just came along and they, they had everybody intimidated. Because remind you, they're both former Bethelites. They both had a lot of status throughout the circuit and the district. Alexander especially because he was older. He was about, he was probably pushing 50 at that time. So he had been around for, for years. He grew up in the organization and went to Bethel at 19. I think he might have been in Bethel for a good 15, maybe 20 years, something like that. So he had a high standing in the organization already. Now Derek Smith, a.k.a. Hollow Man, I had remembered him when I was younger because he used to play ball and lift weights with my cousin's cousin, Jamal. You know what I mean? But back then, he didn't have that... He didn't have that funky-ass breath I don't remember. So, I don't know what happened in between that time. 
and he sounded like this when he was younger you know what i mean he sounded like a normal guy in his early 20s but around 2003 when he came back to the congregation he had this like weird voice like Arr. My name is Derek Smith. Uh, you, you, you consider yourself an exemplary brother. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's just like he, he went from a cool guy to Mr. Broomstick up his ass. But anyway, they come to the congregation. They have, they have all the other elders intimidated. And I'm talking about guys who have been elders going back 30 years at this point. They had them shook. You know? And they they was quick to take responsibilities like congregational responsibilities from brothers. Like if you weren't going out in field service and maintaining your average hours a month for a publisher... They was going to sit you down. You know, I fabricated my hours anyway. I probably really did four or five hours a month of field service, but I always tripled or quadrupled it. So if I did, say, six hours a month, I always rounded it off to like 18 to 24. Even that first summer when Kenji and Hollow Man were there, when I auxiliary pioneered, now, at the time, my auxiliary pioneer, they had changed it from 70 hours to 50 hours. While the pioneer hours went from 90 to 70. So, my cousin Sheaf, he was full-time pioneering. And I was like, I auxiliary pioneered, but just for that summer. You know, but I didn't log no 50 hours. I probably logged maybe 22 23 hours and just you know what I mean but yeah they came in and they just took the fun out of everything I mean we still had gatherings and cookouts or whatever but they wanted got like guys to start dressing different now remember this is the early 2000s this was the baggy jeans you know what I mean Long black t-shirts. You know what I mean? Wearing your hat kind of to the side or backwards. They ain't even want us coming to functions, dress or gatherings or whatever. Dress like that. They wanted us to wear three button polo shirts. Khakis or. They didn't want us wearing no baggy jeans, no. Hats crooked on our head. It's just like they... They just came in and just really started drawing. Blowing up the spot. And about a year after that... That's when I sat myself down. I beat them to it because... I knew it was coming because I kept... Getting into different incidents. Like that wedding, the video I did a couple months back... That was like the last straw when I knew... They were going to try to sit me down. But I beat them to it. And I never had responsibilities again at the congregation, well, West Park. And I was probably there another couple of years after that before moving on to the Northeast congregation. But anyway, you know, I mean, our, our congregation prior to Kenji and Hollow Man, it was, it was like always some shit going down. Like the summer of 2001, when, like some, uh, like a big fight broke out at a skating party. You know what I mean? It led to a guy getting shot. Now, nobody from me or my camp had anything to do with it, but we just so happened to be there, but we left before all of that happened before the shooting or whatever but they got it word got back that we were there and then it was also like other incidents going on remember what i said earlier about the early daughters you know i mean the stuff they was getting into it was a lot of stuff going on with other 
baptized publishers in the congregation. You know what I mean? You had Joe Hearns with his scamming. Lloyd Early, they figured he couldn't control his household. So how was he going to have control of congregation? It was just like a lot of different stuff going on. You know what I mean? We had poor field service attendance across the board. I mean, meeting attendance was always good. Of course, there's always going to be more when the circuit overseer comes. But uh, field service attendance was real bad. And that was one of the reasons why, another reason why they sent in Kenji and Hollow Man. Because once they sent them in, field service attendance started rising. Publishers that was only averaging six, seven hours a month was all of a sudden auxiliary pioneering. You know, people, folks that weren't coming to all of their meetings as diligently as they should was suddenly at all of the meetings. It's like they did whip the congregation in its shape. If you look at it from that angle. But it was like they just took the fun out of everything. And it's like they had everybody shook and scary acting. Like the only the only uh elder that wasn't scared of him was my uncle Sheaf and eventually he wound up stepping down anyway because even he had got tired of this shit after a point. And this was after they tried to manipulate him into reproving me for some shit that they really didn't even have any reason to do it's just that they just I mean they had reason because word was out I had been getting into shit for years at that point from the time Kenji and them came and that made me want to rebel even more against them for the simple fact that everybody else was all scary acting around them you know, and I even told Kenji one time, I said, listen, I don't care how many years you've been in Bethel. I don't care how many friends kisses your butt. I'm not one of them. I said, yeah, I know you from South Philly. I'm from West Philly. You know what I mean? I said, I'm not going to kiss your butt. I'm not going to, you know what I mean, be intimidated by you like... First of all, you look like Varnell Hill for Martin and Kenji. You know what I mean? Plus, you look like Squidworth. Always got your lips balled out and shit. But, I mean, it, we had, we did have a couple good moments. It was a couple times, you know what I mean? We ran into each other at, at Sixer games because he was a big basketball fan. He figured he's older than me but figured he knew more about the game than I did but clearly he was wrong with that and like I said before the congregation he came from I knew a few people from that congregation so I mean and his wife his wife was real nice you know what I mean same thing with uh hollow man Derek Smith his wife both of their wives were real nice and they didn't come in there thinking that they were better than the other wives. Matter of fact, I never really heard any complaints. They, they were two of the nicest sisters in the congregation, despite, you know what I mean, who they were married to. And you know, Kenji, he turned out to be real foul anyway. You know what I mean? Couldn't have found out that he was having an affair with this young pioneer in the congregation. You know what I mean? Allegedly, he passed on some STDs to his wife because it was a it was a time where his wife did wasn't at the hall for a good while, a good couple months. 
But word was that she was sick. And then that she had went to visit her home congregation for a short period of time. But the whole time she was home sick, recovering from whatever diseases he gave her, allegedly. Because I don't know for a fact, but I've heard it from more than one different source that Kenji was living real foul. And it definitely was rumored that he was messing around with this young publisher. Because me and her, we was always real tight. You know? And I would see how she acted around him. And when you know people, when you vibe with them, you know what I mean? You know when something's going on. You know what I mean? But rumor was, was that they was real in love and he wanted to be with her and he was hoping his uh he was hoping that uh something happened to his wife so he could be with it. Uh, yeah, he was a a real foul dude. But like I had always sent something was off with Kenji anyway. Just the way he came in thinking he was the shit and that he ran shit. So I never heard no foul shit about Derek Smith, a.k.a. Olo, man. But as far as Kenji, they come to find out that he didn't even have his own crib, that he was living with another elder and his wife. But, you know, he has so much control and influence over the other elder bodies that they let him do whatever. Gave him the keys in their house. Let him drive their car, lead me. Like, yeah, he, he was living with him for, and I found this out. I found all this out after I had left the J-Dubs. Like around 2008, 2009. This is when I found all that out that he had been living with this elder and his wife for a couple years in that him and his and that Kenji and his wife were actually separated. But, you know, they're not going to tell nobody. They got to maintain that image. Now, I don't know what's going on with them now. And I haven't heard anything about any of these people in years now. But mind you, it's 15 years since I left the cult. So I don't know what's going on with too many people. But the last I heard was that he was living foul, was messing around, gave his wife STDs, and that they were secretly separated. But yet he walked about like he was high and mighty and he was uh, God's gift to the West Park congregation. And I remember even when I went back to West Park for that not even that. It was about maybe a year. It was about that. After I left the Northeast. Like Kenji was acting funny towards me. Or whatever. But you know I mean? I ain't give a fuck at that point. I knew I was one foot out the door at that point anyway. You know what I mean? Me and Derek Smith, we always got along for the most part. He was just Kenji's stink breath sidekick and was always vouching and kicking for him. But other than that, me and besides him having foul ass breath, we always got along. You know, it was one time when I told him that I couldn't be at the meeting for whatever. I was actually going to the game, but he started asking me a bunch of questions. And I said, oh, that's really none of your business. And you know how elders do. They got to flex like, oh, we're Jehovah's spiritually appointed. Man, I ain't trying to hear all that. I got to work. You know what I mean? I was working, all right. Working myself, cheer, uh, cheering on my hometown 76ers. But anyway, Kenji and Hollow Man. Man, oh, man. We used to roast them for days. <laughs> I never forget the time 
I pulled up at the hall. I uh, I got my Young Gun CD in. It's not loud or nothing, but I pull up, and it was about 35, 40 minutes before the meeting. They're both sitting in the car eating uh some Popeye's chicken. <laughs> oh man, that 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 was funny. But yeah, they came along and they had everybody shook. They had my young boy destroy his rap collection and ask me, did I listen to rap? I was like, nah. <laughs> I used to pull up to the meeting listening to rap. But it's just like, it was just that effect they had on everybody. Like it was one time when I was coming home from work and they had all happened to be doing return visits. It was Kenji Hollow Man, my cousin Sheaf and Nad Raj was with them. And see the way our block was on 53rd and Diamond, I'm coming down George's Lane. But instead of, and see our block was one way, which means I would have to turn on Lebanon Avenue, then make a right on Lebanon, make a right on 54th Street, then make a right on the Diamond Street. I ain't feel like doing all that. Plus, I had to go to the bathroom. So coming from George's Lane, approaching Diamond, I threw the car in reverse and just back down Diamond Street. Don't you know that about an hour later, my cousin calls me and was like, yeah, we see you backing down the block and... Hollow Man was like, that's a baptized brother breaking the traffic law or something. I'm like, yeah, they some clowns. They they found anything to nitpick about. And it's like, honestly, that's what drove me, my cousin Sheaf and Nat Ross, that's what drove us out of that congregation. I mean, anyway, they moved up to Pittsburgh when they got married. You know what I mean? And I moved up to the Northeast, whatever, whatever. But a lot of it was to get away from them because they sucked the fun out of the congregation. Like over the, I was probably there about three years from the time they first came. And it's just like, they, it's just like all the mandatory battle talks. It's like you had to be perfect around these clowns it was like I couldn't do it no more but anyway this is just some Hawks talking squawk you know what I mean stay tuned for more content on Hawks vision be sure to subscribe to the channel Hawk out